<coughs> okay, so let's have a little look here. There's so close them up, take a look. So we got to finish up what we started yesterday, and one of the points, sort of an indirect point that that I'm going to make here is that. Left sums are much harder than right sums. Because that I minus 1 doesn't seem like it would do very much, but it does. We pretty easily the other day, we did this stuff right. We, we, uh, we calculated the, the right sum under the curve x squared from 1 to 3, and we got a pretty simple answer. Right? Exactly. We got that, didn't we? 21 plus 45 over 2n plus 9 over 2n squared, okay? The left sum, not so easy. Let's, let's zip through the, the math on the left sum here a little bit. Do we want to go lights off? Yeah. yeah. Lights yeah. off? Okay. And I'll, I'll publish, I don't need to do, today's a, today's a day where I'm going to have some free time to, to upload all my notes. The videos are all uploaded for calculus, but I'll get all my notes uploaded. So the left sum, we're just adding up. The, the height is just going to be f of x minus i, right? Remember what that is, everybody? Don't need to draw a picture. That just means the left edge of the i subinterval, right? Times delta x. Well, x sub i, x sub i minus 1, sorry. Is just, well, it's, it's a plus i minus 1 delta x, but a is 1, remember, and yeah, a is 1, right? Delta x is, for us, for this problem is 4 minus 1 over n, right? So if we make those substitutions, do you see how this thing flows here? So this is it. This is x sub i minus 1 if we plug in the value of delta x, get that. Uh, we can, 4 minus 1 is just 3, right? We can go ahead and factor out this 3 over n too, right? Because it doesn't have any i's in it. So it's not a variable as far as the sigma is concerned, right? Remember, we had that property we explored yesterday. If it doesn't have any i's in it, we can pull it out front, okay? It doesn't mean that it's not going to be a, n's not going to be a variable with respect to something else, but it's not a variable as far as the sigma is concerned. Uh, then what? Okay, so what can we do in here? Well, we can. I don't think you can just, well, right there. It, what did you, it put, you put the square in on the right side of it. If you move the. Oh, oh this thing. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. So, so the function is just x squared, right? So then whatever's inside the brackets, whatever's inside the function is being squared. Okay, and so if we square that out, what do we get? Well, 1 plus 2 times 1 times this term, which is that, plus that term squared, which is that big ugly thing, right? And then we could distribute the 6 over n and the 9 over n squared and get this big, long, ugly string of terms, right? And then now what? Well, let's go ahead and collect, well, let's collect like terms. So I'm going to collect all the terms that don't have any i's. I'll collect the terms that have i's and the i squared term, right? Let's make the non-i terms blue. Let's make everything all the terms with a single i, yellow, and the i squared term green. Yeah. Okay, so we're just, this is math, right? We're just going through some algebra here. I'm just, and I'm going through one, you know, like I should. I'm, I'm doing vertical question, mistake. Can you go up just a little bit? Uh, go back to me. All right, yeah. Okay, See what I did? I just, all I did here was just distribute the 6 over n to both of those. Yeah. And the 9 over n squared to all those. Yeah. Right? Okay. And hoping I didn't make any mistakes. I think I'm okay, but we'll see, I guess. Uh, so now that's all as far as I got. So we, we, um, 
I'm going to add up these sums now, right? So I've got the sum of all this stuff, but let's break that into separate sums. Let, let's add up each of these sums individually, right? So we've got the blue sum, the yellow sum, and the green sum from 1 to n, okay? Well, here I've just got this coefficient times the sum of 1, right? So that's just going to give me an n. Agreed? Here I've got this coefficient times the sum of i, and the sum of i is n times n plus 1 over 2, right? And the sum of the green stuff, I can pull the 9 over n squared out front, and I've got the sum of i squared, which is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. And, and that's where we are. I just did one additional thing. We just conveniently, we canceled an n in each of these to make them a little bit easier, right? So those ends cancel, we can cancel those ends, we can cancel those ends, and now we're, now we gotta do a little bit more stuff here, so what? So if I distribute the three, I'm just gonna get three minus 18 over n plus 27 over n squared. Now what about here? So let's do, one thing we could do is let's factor a 2 out of those and cancel that. It's a little better, right? Uh, what else? So then now we've got to, I got to multiply through by n plus 1, right? So how are we going to do this? Well, that's just going to be kind of a mess. So I'm going to end up getting, and you got you got to check me on this, right? So let's go ahead and distribute the n and the 3 over this whole thing, okay? So when I distribute the n, what am I going to get? I'm gonna, that's going to cancel that in, right? So I'm just going to get 9. Everybody agree? Yeah. If I distribute the n to this one, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a uh, minus or a plus. Uh, and then I'm going to get, what, 27 over n, because one of the n's will cancel. What okay. happened to the plus what 1 in that? that? Say it again. We're right. doing that next. But yeah, now, now oh. we'll distribute. Oh, okay. So we're now we'll distribute the 1. If I distribute the 1, I'm going to get plus 9 over n, right, minus 27 over n squared. Okay. Okay. Questions on that? Okay, what about over here then? Oh, right. <laughs> so this is going to give us, well, we can do a little cancellation here though, can't we? We could 3 times 9, so we could do this. Let's cancel the 3 and make that a 2, right? So now I'm going to have a 9 halves, 9 over 2n squared times the product of all this stuff. In fact, just to make this one a little bit easier, let's just... Let's take this one in two steps. So 9 over 2n squared times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. Well, you, are, you told me yesterday that's just 2n squared plus 3n plus 1, right? Okay. So 3 minus 18 over n plus 27 over n squared. We couldn't start... We we could yeah I'm gonna hold off until we get the green ones done and then we'll then we'll we'll combine everything. Can we get it for right. Minus twenty seven over n squared. So what are we gonna get for the green stuff then? We're gonna get when I distribute to here the twos will cancel and I'm just gonna get nine, aren't I? Right. The two n squared and the two n squared cancel. When I distribute to here I'm gonna get. 27 over 2n. Everybody agree? Yeah. Okay. And when I distribute to here, I'm going to get 9 over 2n squared. squared. Good. So now, all we got to do is just combine like terms. Whoa. Right? So what's that going to give us? We're going to get... We're going to get 21. 21. So let's just... So I'm going to get 3 plus 9 plus 9 is 21. What about the ends? The terms with ends on the bottom. So that's going to give me... Minus 18n minus 27 over n 
is, is minus, minus five. Five. 45 exactly. plus 9 over n is minus 36. Uh, okay, so now we got a, we got minus 36 over n plus 27 over 2n. So that's minus 72 over 2n plus 27 oh. is 50, what is it? 72 and 47, 45, 54? 45. <laughs> yeah, 45, you're right, 45. 45, so right, so we're going to get minus 45 over 2n, right? And then, Cost the one that n squares. Done. So n squares, we're going to get we're going to get plus twenty seven n not. squared minus twenty seven n squared. So those guys cancel. It's just going to be nine over two n squared. So plus nine over two n squared. Okay. So there's my answer. So let's summarize this stuff, right? That was that was L. Go ahead, say again. It's pretty similar. It's a little different. Ah, okay, good. So let's, yeah, let's let's summarize it. So we get L of n equals 21 minus 45 over 2n plus 9 over 2n squared. Now let's just copy these to another page so we can compare the two. Are these good formulas for other, are these going to be like set formulas? Uh, no, 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 not at all. No, we're going we're gonna to come up with, we're, we're going we're gonna to see something here that's going to give us a much, much better strategy, right? But we're going to have to use this information to get there. So, we did a lot of algebra, but we did, we got L sub n, and then if we go back a little bit, we got R sub n right there. Ooh, boy, that looks familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, just it's one just term is different. It's How just a minus instead of Right, so you know, we know we did it right because that kind of symmetry doesn't happen. And it makes sense. Think what we did, right? We're just, we're taking rectangles. If we think about the sums that we added up, remember how they overlapped, right? Uh, I'll go there in a second, but let me just, let me paste this next to this guy. Right, this makes sense if you really think about this. If we go back and look at days and days ago, where is that? Right there, right? So we, here we can see that, like in this case, uh, this is the first, second, third, fourth. So R sub 4 is equal to L sub 5, right? You get that? That those two match up, those two match up, those two match up. I'm looking at orange and blue, right? Those two match up. The only things that differ are just the ones on the ends, right? So it makes sense that those those sums should look almost identical because they're all but the but the extreme left and extreme right rectangles are going to be identical in both of those sums, right? In fact, there's only going to be one that's any different. In this case, like the orange and the blue are the same here. Only place they differ is by that one little rectangle up there, right? That, that separates the orange from the blue. You get the idea, right? So it's not surprising that our answer would look <laughs> like that, right? So now here's the fun part. Let's go ahead and make a little table and let's figure out what the right and the left sums are for various values of n. Okay? So we could do this. In Desmos, well, this will be a fun adventure because I'm not really sure how to do this in Desmos, but maybe you guys can help me. I think I've done it before. So let's try this. I know we can do this on the calculators pretty easily, but. Graphing. Okay, so how the heck do we do this? We do table. I think I need to define the expression first. So we'll do R, well, we'll call them X's instead of N's. So R of X 
equals 21 plus 45. Oh, it's so dark. I can't see it. I'm typing 45 over 2x plus 9 <clears throat> over 2x squared. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is going to be L, and all I had to do was change that to a minus. Okay, now what we want to do is make a table. So there's my table, and... Okay, I think I have to do one more step in there. I think I have to say y1 equals y1 equals r of x1 maybe. Oh, that worked great. Oh, it didn't work at all. Let's try this. Oh. Uh, how come that one looks different? Anybody see that? That last one? Oh, it's because the squared's on the bottom. Never mind. Any ideas? Subscript to one. And the R of X. Try it right there, maybe? No. In the table, in the table, it's RX1, not RX. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Okay. How do I do that though? X. Because it seems like I'm supposed to be, if I type a 1, it's supposed to. There. Oh, there it worked. Huh. You got it. Okay, good. How do you subscript something? If you just type the 1 right next to it, it, it knows it's a subscript. It's pretty smart. Okay, so there's our table. Now let's make another, another one. Now let's do this one as L of x1. Oh, there we go. Okay. So in this case, what is x1? No, I won't do that. So what is x1? It's, I mean, but it's n for us, isn't it? Right? So if we make some, let's just try this. What's happening here? getting bigger. What's happening to those sums? Values are getting closer together. They're getting closer together, aren't they? Everybody see that? Put in 21. Once I get down there, <laughs> you know, if I get down there, how far do we have to go before they're within a tenth of each other? I'm surprised it takes this long. Wow. Okay, let's make that like 1,000 and see what we get. Oh, man. Huh. Well, we're getting pretty close. Right now we're within... That would have taken a really long time. Yeah, it would have. Yeah, I mean, we're, with, we're well within a tenth, though. We're within, what, like a couple hundredths? Does that make sense? If I go, what, let's just go ahead and add another zero. Getting even closer. Add another zero. Another zero. Another zero. Another zero. Well, I mean, now at that point, with, within, within the rounding error of Desmos, all I had to do was go out to like 100 million, and then we had it set, right? Okay. So, so we said the right sum was a lot easier than the left sum, wasn't it? So formulate a strategy then. Switch the negative value. 
Well, okay, but but the right the right sum it was easier to calculate, but it wasn't exact. I mean, if I go back up this, if I go back up the table quite a bit, look, the right sum is off. It, it's not the the correct answer appears to be what. 21, yeah. So, so we're not there. I mean, they're good approximations. But notice that as I got large numbers of rectangles, eventually both of them converge on, to within rounding error, converge on what? 21. So, so come up with a strategy then. Strategy to do what? Well, I want to get the exact answer. Infinity and for n. What do we do? Take the substitute as infinity for n. Take a limit. Okay, which which we infinity is not a number, so we have to take a limit, right? We're gonna take a limit as x approaches infinity because you can't plug in infinity; it's not a number, right? But we can take a limit as as n gets infinitely big, right? And in fact, you you see the strategy. Yeah. And so, look what happens here then if we if we go back. Well, here are our look here are our sums, our right sum and our left sum, right? So the limit. Let's do the limit of r sub n as n approaches infinity. Which is going to be 21. And that's going to give us 21, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? Because everybody agree the limit of 21 plus 45 over 2n plus 9 over 2n squared as n approaches infinity, any term with an n on the bottom is going to zero. Right? I, I get the same thing for the left sum. Mm -hmm. Which one was easier to calculate again? The right, the right <clears throat> sum was much easier to calculate. So what should our strategy be? If we want to do this the easiest way, calculate the right, right one and take a limit. Do the right one and take a limit. Right? They're going to convert. Isn't it always just going to be the first term? It, Say it again. Isn't it always just going to be the constant it's just going to be the one that Well, it is, right. It is. In this case, it is. Yeah, you're right. It's well, going to be. Yeah, we well, yeah. If you're doing this kind of an approach to it, yeah, it will be. Anything that's got an n in it is going to on the bottom is going to go away, and if there were an n on the top, I mean, you know, be infinity. yeah, it'd be infinity, right? But we're not going to calculate any sums that have an n on the top. Can you go back to the original equation? Yeah, go back to like come here and stop. Very wasn't it, beginning. Wasn't it just x squared? Twelve slides ago. Yeah, twelve slides. It was right there, I think, wasn't it? Yep, f of x equals x squared. Yeah, right there. Oh. Yeah, he's got all this One stuff. to four. There we go. Right there. 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 this there. Right 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 there which is the right edge. Because we're taking an infinite limit, and we can see this graphically. Oh, yeah, I found a really good, I don't, don't want to forget, I found another really good little tool here to show you this. And it's in my Desmos account. So let me go to, I got sign in. Okay, check this guy out. Yeah, so so check this out. Now look, we're looking at, let's go ahead and make the function what we just looked at. The function is just going to be x squared. And we're going to go left endpoint, let's make 1, and the right endpoint is 3, right? So there is the, here is what we're calculating. Was that 4? Oh, you're right, it was, it was 4. So that needs to be four, okay? And I need to probably zoom out a little bit. So there's the area we're we're trying to estimate. Agreed? Yes. Okay. How about if I tweak the vertical axis just a little bit so we can I'll compress it a little bit. So we'll go negative one two. Five. Oh, wrong thing. And here I'm going to go negative one, two. Actually, I can go, yeah, negative one to five. Okay? Good. Are you making it a little smaller? 
Yeah, that didn't work, did it? I make the other one smaller, Dan. Yes, because you made the other one <clears throat> just zoom out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what zoom I did. Zoom out all the way. Right. So what I really wanted to do was expand the X, didn't I? Leave the, y, leave the Y alone. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So X, I could go from negative 1 to 5. There. That ought to be better. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So this is the... This is going to be, this is the left sum, right? Let's let the number of subintervals get bigger. So there's two, there's three, right? How come that thing keeps coming up? I'll just drag it. Four, there's five, six, seven, eight. Look what happens if I drag this thing way out there. You see how that works? As the as the saw edges become much, much smaller, they match the curve much, much better, don't they? Right? We exhaust that area, that missing area. Let's pick the upper sum. So I think I gotta go it's, it's a C. C, okay. So C is you have to drag it to the one. That's the midpoint, that's and there's the right edge. Okay. So we can do the same thing now. We can just let n, if n's really, if n's 1, that's a pretty poor approximation. If it's 2, it's a pretty poor approximation. But when I get really big, it's a pretty good approximation, yeah. right? Now, we could go through the hassle of using midpoints instead of the left or the right, but that's going to be even worse, isn't it, right? In terms of the actual calculation, using the midpoints of each section to calculate the heights, yeah, it's, it's obviously it's a better approximation for low numbers of n, but it's a much more difficult calculation. And ultimately, I'm going to get the same darn answer anyway, right? When I go up to really, when I let n approach infinity. So let's use the easiest one, which is the right edge. In fact, you might even call this, there's our textbook, I think our, our physical textbook does this, but the online one doesn't. We could even say, just for the sake of convenience, let's let let's let c sub i, c for convenience, equal x sub i. Right? So the most convenient place on any subinterval is always going to be the right edge which is just a plus i delta x, right? So if we want to do, if we want to do a, a, you know, get an exact area under a curve then, let's use the right sum and let's just take the limit as n approaches infinity, right? So, for example, if we want to calculate the area that's bad color. We want to calculate the area under f of x on the interval from a to b, then that exact area, we'll call it a sub r for the Riemann sum, that exact area is just going to be a, is going to be r sub n, right? Which was, what was that? That was just the sum of f of x sub i, which is just a plus I delta x times delta x, right? Is it the n i equals 1 or is it not? As i goes from oh, I 1 to n, right? But we're going to take the limit of that as n approaches infinity, right? And so we call that a sub r because we call it a Riemann sum named after Dr. Riemann. I don't remember exactly what he did, but he was a good mathematician to get his name on this one. Right? So let's try this. Now that we've we've ironed this or we've, we've narrowed this down to a much more concise process, we can just immediately go to the right sum and take a limit. So if we want to calculate, for example, area under the 
y equals, mm, let's do a hard, let's do root. We have 10 minutes left. Okay, we may not finish it, but I think, I bet we will. I think it was like three days. Yeah, it did. They get, they get quicker, though, as we go along here. It's only two days on this one, yeah. So the area under, there's my function, right? That's f of x. Okay, so what's this going to look like? Let's, we're going to start general. So we start with the generic Riemann sum, and then we'll gradually plug in the specifics corresponding to our area that we're looking for, right? Okay, so what's that look like then? So we got the limit of the sum of f of a plus i delta x times delta x. i goes from 1 to n in the limit as n goes to infinity. Okay, well, what's our a and what's our b? Negative 1 and 1. Negative 1 and 1. Okay, so then uh, if that's a and that's b, what's delta x? So 2. How many rectangles? Yeah, good. 2 over n, right? And our function is this, x squared minus x cubed, right? So then this is going to become the limit of the sum of a plus i delta x is just going to become negative 1 plus i times 2 over n. Well, that's just 2i over n, right? So if I'm going to take f of that, that's going to be that squared minus that cubed. Agreed? Thank you. So just this part right here is going to be, so the quantity negative 1 plus 2i over n squared minus negative 1 plus 2i over n cubed. Right? So there's f of x. That's it. Times delta x is 2 over n. Right? Okay, now let's, let's plug in. So the arguments of each of these processes. So the sigma, the index variable is i. The variable of the limit is n, right? So the limit is focusing on the ends, the sigma is focusing on the i's. Question? Will I always be, will I always be 1? Yeah, it'll go from 1 to n. Yep. Yeah, because oh, we're, okay, yeah. right, we're adding it from the first to the nth rectangle. Yeah. Okay, so then where does this 2 over n go? Oh. In front of the limit. In front, okay, I can't go clear in front oh, of the limit, but I can go in front of the sigma. sigma. I can't put it in front of the limit, though, because the limit is, is the variable of the limit is an n, right? So it's not a constant as far as the limit is concerned, only the sigma. So to clean things up, we could, this is optional, but I think it helps to pull that out of the sigma, right? At least temporarily. So we can just do, we can just work on the yellow part, okay? So we get the limit of 2 over n times the sum of all this stuff, right? Well, let's go ahead and start simplifying here. If I square this out, what do I get? 1 minus 4i over n plus 4i squared over n. 4i squared over n squared. Good. Okay. Minus, we'll distribute the minus sign, 1 uh, plus, when I distribute to the middle term, right? What's that going to be? 6, oh no, I'm cubing, never mind. I'm going to cube this whole thing out. So let, let's do this in steps. It'll be too complicated to not do this in steps. So minus, what if I cube this whole thing out? Right, what's my expansion for a cube, for a binomial, if I cube it out? A plus B cubed is what? 
a cubed plus three a squared three plus three a b squared plus b cubed, right? Wow. Right. So we have to do all that where this is a and that's b, right? Okay. So that's going to give us negative one, right? Negative one cubed is negative one plus three times negative 1 squared is positive 3 times 2i over n. So that's going to be plus 6i over n. Three. Minus, because now I'm going to get 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 times 2i over n squared. So that's just that term right there, right? So minus 12i squared over n squared, right? And then finally, we're going to get b cubed, right? So that's just going to be 8i cubed over n cubed, right? Can you scroll up a little bit? Sure. Okay. So where is the a in the very first substitution? Because it looks like there's two of the same thing and then something else on the end. But the delta x the, should be. You mean, you mean right, right here? Up at the very top. I understand everything below this. Oh, okay. So right. So well, that a is different than this a. Right. This a is just the left boundary. So there's, there it is, right there, okay. and right there, and it shows up implicitly in the two so over. So why is it in two places, right there? Uh, because look at our function. Our function has two separate terms. We have an x squared minus an x cubed. Okay. So here's x squared. Here's x cubed, right? So this, but let me kind of color code this a little bit. So, so everything light green, right? Those go together, and these go together, right? Okay, and I, I technically I should have brackets around the problem, right? Should do this. I just didn't want to clutter it up too much. Is that right? I just didn't understand how the f of up, yeah, the f of a plus i delta x multiplied by delta x became that first line. Oh, it became this line right here? Yeah. Okay, does that make sense now? Um, can you go through it one more time? Sure. So so f of would you agree that f of hand is just hand squared minus hand cubed, right? Yeah. Okay, well what's hand? Hand is negative one plus two i over n. Right? Yeah. So there's hand squared minus hand cubed. Okay. Okay. And then now we're just so the next step is we're just expanding all those out. Right? But now we can at least can combine like terms. So it'll get a little bit better, right? Okay, so if we do that, this will be the last line for the day probably. But you gotta kind of think, isn't this pretty cool that we can start this is like real math. I mean and you guys are able to follow. I mean, this isn't just that, you know, all that minor league stuff you've been doing. I mean, this is like major league stuff. You're doing, this is real math. And I really think math. Okay, so then what are we going to get from all this? So we get the sum, oops, we get the sum of, let's distribute the negative. So that's going to give us a plus 1 minus 6i over n plus 12i squared over n squared minus 8i cubed over n cubed, right? Keep going. So, so we can get one more line in. Oh, okay. Keep All right. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll pick that up. Tomorrow and we'll uh, we'll finish this up. We will.